One of the tools that I regularly use when I'm mentoring project teams is the burndown chart. Here's a sample chart for a 10-day sprint where the planning meeting has determined that there's 35 hours of work to be done. This row of data gives a steady line, so if the team is working in a steady pace, we should see progress like this. The next line down records the actual number of hours estimated remaining at the end of each workday. Now we start with 35, which is the same. Let's say after the first day, we think now there are 30 hours left. Well, we might punch that in here, and we can see that the actual line is shown in green. And maybe the next day we realize some of our estimates were bad, and there's actually 32 hours left, and so on, and so on. I found this to be a really valuable tool for a team. So, for example, if they saw this shape in the chart, they know that there's some kind of a problem, either with their estimates or with their progress. Now, normally, I like to have this kind of a chart physically in the room where my students meet. But I can't always do that because the room isn't available or I have too many student teams. And so managing this on Google Docs is okay. But the burn down chart is only really valuable if people are looking at it regularly. And on a distributed team, it's a bit error prone to just expect everybody to go look at it or to circulate it every day on Slack or Discord. One of the tools that my teams have been using lately is Hack and Plan. This is a really nice web-based tool for project planning and it's really tied to game development. And the free version gives us everything we need for small student teams. Here's a simple example of what the Sprint 1 board might look like right after a planning meeting. Notice that each of these tasks is tied to a particular story. Each task has an hourly estimate. There's an important part of this I want to mention. It's a technique that I use when I'm managing my student teams. We never track how much time we spent on a task. I read some advice years ago that was really useful to me. I can't remember where I read it now, unfortunately. But it pointed out that if you track how much time you spent on a task, that can be a bit demoralizing and doesn't necessarily help you succeed. On the other hand, if you track how much time is remaining, then you always know where you are relative to your goal. So let's say, for example, we started working on this task. We work on it for a bit and we recognize, well, now there's four hours remaining. What I would do here is actually change the estimated cost. There's four hours left on this task. Now, up here, we can click on this little info box, and conveniently, it tells us how many hours we think are left in the project. Let's take that back to the burndown chart. That would be a case sort of like this. Now, what I'd like to do is get this chart integrated into Hack and Plan. Now, let me show you a nice way we can do that. Inside Google Docs, we can click on the chart, and we can say that we want to publish it. I'm going to click the Embed tab, and I want an image, not an interactive form. Now I'll click Publish, and this gives me some HTML code in an iframe. I don't actually want the iframe code, all I care about is this URL. So I'll copy that. Now, back over in Hack and Plan. What I'm going to do is edit this board itself and just embed that image right here. Now we can see that chart shows up right here. So again, if anybody goes to this info box, there's our most recent chart. Now I do need to give a little caveat here, which is that this chart is not automatically updated as soon as the spreadsheet changes. Let's take a look at that. Let's say we make some more progress, maybe uh, on the programming side. And we estimate that there's only maybe one hour left remaining here, like so. Well, I can see now there's 28 hours left on the project. And so if it's the end of the workday, I can go back to my burn down chart. And say now we have 28 hours remaining. We can see the green line going up to the end of day three here. But when I click over here, it's still the original burn down chart. This is because when you publish a chart with Google Docs, it only updates every five or 10 minutes. So what I'm going to do is wait five minutes and then continue my recording. Okay, I waited a few minutes and I'll tell you, music is a lot worse now than it was back then. 
Now I'm still just looking at the same picture here and I can close and I can reopen the info box and it's still the same picture. But here's a trick. The new version actually has been published but somewhere along the line, possibly in the browser, this image is being cached. If I reload this page and then click the info box, presto, it's the new version. So there we go. That's how we can use burndown charts alongside Hack and Plan and embed the burndown charts right into our info box for the sprint. By the way, I'll provide a public link to the sample burndown chart in the video description. I hope you found that useful. Happy programming!